Joining me now, Dr. Uh, Ashish Jha, the director of the Harvard Global Health Institute, and Dr. Lippi Roy, an internal medicine uh, physician and MSNBC medical contributor. Good to have both of you doctors with us. Uh, Dr. Jha, let me begin with you just to underscore this point. Take a look at this stunning slide uh, behind President Trump. The goal is to see between 100,000 and 240,000 deaths. That was the number that was touted yesterday. This is a pretty sobering image. Do you think, do you have any reason to doubt that? Do you think it's accurate? Uh, th that is, it's, it certainly is possible that we're going to get that many deaths, and it's possible that we're going to have more people than that die. First of all, I think, I mean, it's worth remembering um, that is an astronomically high number. That's three to eight times as many people who die in a car accident every year. Um, and a lot of this is because we were so late to the game. Um, if we do everything right now, I think we can get that number to be as, you know, on the low end and maybe even lower than 100,000. But it's going to be very, very hard um, because we've been so late to coming to this game. Uh, Dr. Roy, the Surgeon General uh, talked about the projections this morning on the Today Show. I want to play you this soundbite. Take a listen. All right, so it seems we may have had some uh, technical problems uh, with that. But essentially, uh, he says those projections are definitely sobering but do not have to be our reality. If we really do our part, then we can flatten our curve even below those projections. What would need to happen in the coming weeks to try and get that number below those projections? Yeah, uh, um, sobering and, and frankly, gruesome reality. Uh, I actually agree with Ashish that that number can, in fact, be higher. Dr. Fauci, uh, along with Dr. Cha, many other experts have really been kind of predicting this. Uh, and I also agree with the point that this could have been prevented. I, I, look, I don't, I don't believe in looking back. I believe in looking forward. Uh, as we've all said before, every medical public health professional said before, this is a disease for which we have no uh, rapid widespread testing yet. I mean, it, we're working through that, but no treatment, no cure, and no vaccine. The only thing that we know that works so far is good old-fashioned public health strategy of, in this case, uh, physical distancing. I know I know we keep saying that, but as healthcare medical professionals, we're really asking, if not begging, the public to really play a role here, an active role in saving your lives and ours. I, and I'm, I, it's not even rhetoric or melodrama to say saving lives. We know that the physical distancing is what's really going to be key moving forward, as well as the hand hygiene and all the other things that we've been talking about. It's absolutely key. Dr. Roy, I want to talk to you for a moment about uh, the mental aspect of this from a lot of the physicians that you're probably speaking to, personal friends and colleagues, many of them uh, probably being overwhelmed emotionally, maybe even in the long run are going to have some PTSD from what they're seeing. What are you hearing anecdotally about the reality of what these doctors, these nurses, these medical workers on the front lines uh, are dealing with as these projections start becoming a reality for many? Yeah, so I, I'm so glad you asked that, Eamon. It's a really key point. So I'll share anecdotal data, but I'm going to show, share real data with you as well. So remember, before COVID-19, before this massive pandemic, uh, burnout amongst physicians and clinicians, healthcare workers, was already an epidemic. Almost 50 percent of uh, certainly physicians complained of some type of burnout symptoms. And remember, burnout isn't just stress. You and I, we all have stress. Burnout is physical and emotional exhaustion and depersonalization and an inability to appreciate one's work and th to the point where you can't recover from it. So what's going to happen now? And by the way, there are adverse consequences to burnout. It's, there's increased medical errors, increased, um, uh, sorry, poor uh, quality of patient care and increased risk of a, a drug addiction, suicide, depression. Um, I take this all very, very seriously. Some of the, 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 the quotes that my, my colleagues, these are former attendings of mine who've trained me, who've trained for years and who've been working and seeing patients for years. One of these mentors and now friends and colleagues of mine said they cry every night, sobbing, but from their bathroom so their five-year-old can't hear. Another infectious disease doctor, colleague of mine, said that, um, that she is humbled by this mm. virus that can take somebody from walking and talking and healthy one minute to being intubated on a ventilator, fighting for their life in another. Um, I think we need real interventions right now to help these healthcare workers, nurses, physical therapists, right. respiratory therapists, maybe a mental health professional, a therapist, 
who can meet with and d maybe debrief with people after their shift. Yeah, whatever certainly. Whatever they need. Yeah, you know? and that's certainly going to be something we're going to have to deal with as a society as we go forward. Dr. Jha, new data shows that as many as 25% of people infected with the virus uh, may actually not show symptoms. That's a big problem for medical workers, a number that is leading the CDC to consider uh, broadening its guidelines on who should wear masks. That's obviously something that's getting a lot of, uh, garnering a lot of debate in this country. And it's certainly creating a little bit of a confusion and mixed messaging about the issue. What's your advice to people when they go to a grocery store or a pharmacy? Should they be covering their face or not? Yeah. So it's a great question. And again, I think the key things we need to do to get this disease under control are still the things we've been talking about. Avoid going out as much as possible. Let's get testing in place. Let's save masks for doctors and nurses. If we have enough nurse, uh, masks for doctors and nurses, I think it's probably a good idea for people to be wearing masks when they're out in public. What I'm worried about is that we are so behind in our supplies that we don't want to take uh, doctors and nurses and make them not have the masks they need. And so it's really important right now that we sort of shore up our healthcare workers. After that, I do think it'll be important for the public when they go out, uh, if they have to go out, uh, to wear masks. But to me, that's a secondary issue. Number one is getting doctors and nurses uh, to have the masks they need, because we need them to be healthy to take care of everybody. All right, Dr. Ashish Jha and Dr. Lippi Roy, thank you both for joining us this hour. Always appreciate your insights. Stay safe.